Back now to Lisa Fletcher's report on two women who left Scientology, including a niece of the church's worldwide leader. Jenna Miscavige Hill, a niece of David Miscavige, Scientology's leader, and Astra Woodcraft grew up in the church. But Astra's father, Lawrence, wanted out. He says he felt that wasn't an option. You'll be declared a suppressive person and then you'll never speak to your family again. Suppressive person, or SP, is church lingo for someone who is anti-Scientology, or in their terms, seeks to suppress any betterment activity or group. Tom Cruise referenced SPs in that leaked Scientology video. So, like, have you met an SP? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him, <laughs> you know, and I thought, oh, what a beautiful thing, because maybe one day it'll be like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe one day it will be <laughs> Wow, SPs, like, they'll just read about those in the history books, you know? <laughs> if you leave without permission, they declare you a suppressive person, and they make your family and all your friends, anyone in Scientology who knows you, they make them disconnect from you. Despite the risk of being labeled an SP, Lawrence says he couldn't take it anymore. He left the church. He and his wife divorced. I was told I couldn't see my father anymore because he wasn't in the Sea Org. She wasn't ever supposed to see me, but she would sneak out and come and see me on Friday morning. We had a few hours we were given to do our laundry, and I used to sneak off to see him. There's a little bit of a problem in getting people to talk critically about the Church of Scientology, because quite frankly, they're scared. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, no, 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 no. In 1992, Nightline's Ted Koppel did the one and only network television interview with Jenna's uncle, David Miscavige, where he challenged him about the church's policies. They, who do not belong to any organization, are quite frankly afraid to come out and speak. Well, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, that story doesn't, doesn't hold water because I'll tell you, from my perspective, the person getting harassed is myself and the church. I must have been like eight years old. We were all told to watch it. We, and we like never watch TV. So we were like, oh, yay, watch TV. What well, is it you can do for me? Well, number one, I, w I would never try to talk you into that Scientology is for you. you I remember, you know, my parents saying, yeah, he did so good in that interview. That when Ted Koppel said time. negative things about the church, he discredited them in his mind. But Jenna says the good relationship she had enjoyed with her uncle would turn sour. She says one day when she was 14, I got in trouble for chit-chatting when I was supposed to be studying and I wanted to call my parents they hung up the phone and I was like no I want to call my parents I tried to run to the other payphone to call them and they were like no people were physically stopping me basically I got held down by like three people I had punched one of them because they were doing that shortly thereafter she says she was confronted by her uncle you know what you did is unacceptable you're not gonna get any more special treatment I was like if special treatment means being held down and not being allowed to talk to your family then I am happy to be rid of it Celebrity Center International is a Scientology church located in Hollywood, California. It is aptly named, as many Hollywood celebrities are members of the church. Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, John Travolta, and Kirstie Alley. I had one auditing session uh, in Scientology, and I never did drugs again or had the urge to do drugs again. Auditing is a fundamental and common practice in Scientology. It's a kind of counseling session in which a person is asked a series of questions, negative feelings and thoughts are identified, and hopefully purged through the use of what's called an e-meter. You just basically hold two cans and I think they measure electrical resistance. They have a whole list of prepared questions. You know, are you withholding anything? Do you have an upset over anything? In other words, they want to find out what's going on in your life. Once a week we would get a meter check where they just have you sit there and they see, observe your needle and if it's like dirty, then that means that you're hiding something. But Jenna says the e-meter and auditing could also be used to interrogate. Do you have intentions to leave and never come back? Um, do you um, talk about that bad things about the church to your parents? You could be randomly interrogated at any time? Yeah. That's normal? Yeah, I mean, usually it's because they're suspicious of you. In 2000, Jenna's parents, David Miscavige's brother and sister-in-law, were in the process of leaving the church. Jenna says around this time, her e-meter sessions suddenly intensified. One day I just got plucked out of my usual activities and um, by a very high representative in the church. Um, and I was interrogated on the e-meter and I was put into like a grubby uniform and I was made to 
um, clean the back stairwell or um, clean and restain the stalls in the bathroom and then I would go back and get more interrogation. Jenna says there were times when she was physically restrained during auditing sessions. There's been many times when I've tried to leave the room and they've physically held me in there, like physically to a point where I was yelling and screaming. But according to this Scientology report from May 2006, provided to us by Jenna, the church says she was the violent one. The report states she had a long history of verbally and physically accosting other staff members, neglecting duties, damaging church property, mayhem, mutiny, and turbulation. Jenna doesn't deny the incidents, but says the church restrictions pushed her to the breaking point. When we come back, Jenna and Astra deciding to leave the Church of Scientology. Nightline continues from Washington with Terry Moran. And back now to Lisa Fletcher's report on two women who grew up in the Church of Scientology, but eventually left the fold. I've been very unhappy the whole time I was there, but this was something I never told anyone, my husband, my friends. Astra Woodcraft was becoming disillusioned with the church. They came out with a new rule. They said, that's it, no more kids. And she was very upset when she was about 16 or 17 and said they suddenly decided to change the rules and that, you know, Sea Org members were no longer allowed to have children. If you get pregnant when you're in the Sea Org, um, you either have to leave or you get an abortion. I know people who have gotten like up to four abortions. I remember thinking, well, wait a minute, I never agreed to this. You know, I'm like 17 years old. I haven't made a decision. I'm not going to have children. Two years after the policy was established, Astra learned she and her husband were expecting a baby. A very high level Sea member saw me one day and asked me what I was doing. And I said that I was leaving. And he said, why? And I said, I'm pregnant. And he said, oh, is it too late for an abortion? in like such a callous way I was I didn't even know what to say in response we're talking about a culture where they think that what they're doing is so important that everything else isn't important in a San Francisco Chronicle article from 2001 church leaders responded that it has no policy on abortion leaving the choice up to individual couples Lawrence remembers the relief he felt when his daughter Astra finally decided to leave the church I think that gradually started to seep in on her. Wait a minute, there's more to life than Scientology. That's when she just took off, just got the hell out of that rotten organization. Sorry, it makes me upset to think about it. But. Soon after Astra left, she divorced her husband, and she says she was disconnected from her family that was still in the church. A few years later, Astra's younger sister left too. I just realized, I was like, this isn't helping me. Jenna Miscavige-Hill, a niece of David Miscavige, Scientology's leader, says it wasn't until years after her parents left the church that she began to realize she wanted to leave as well. I don't even have a life. I don't get to enjoy things. Who am I really helping? Jenna says she and her husband Dallas went back and forth about leaving or staying in the church. In 2005, they finally left for good. But first, Jenna says she was told to sign paperwork, promising not to talk about her experiences within the church. And that's a bond, which I didn't sign. I shredded it in front of the lady's face. Now out of the church, Astra and Jenna and another ex Sea Org member started their website, exscientologykids.com. It's just a way for people to share stories and to maybe reconnect with people who they knew before. Reconnection was the theme of the latest anti-Scientology protest staged by the group Anonymous. I'm not a member of Anonymous, but, um, you know, they, they are rallying um, peaceful protests. My mom, my grandma, my brother, and I haven't heard or, from them or seen them in eight years. And um, today the protest is about disconnection and reconnections. Now with her nine-year-old daughter by her side, Astra says she and Jenna are trying to move forward. If they would just let people who wanted to be there be there and if someone wanted to leave they let them leave and if someone didn't like what was going on they let them speak their mind there wouldn't that there'd be no story I'm not gonna be scared I'm not gonna be intimidated I'm just gonna continue living my life the way I want it to be I'm not gonna let them affect me anymore for Nightline this is Lisa Fletcher in Los Angeles and once again, Jenna's parents, the brother and sister-in-law of Scientology's leader, declined our request for an interview. Jenna says that she has a good relationship with her parents now that they have all left the church. When we come back, Scientology responds. 
For weeks, Nightline repeatedly asked the Church of Scientology for an on-the-record response to our report. Tonight, we received a statement in which the Church says it would not comment on what it called Jenna Hill's, quote, dismissal from her Sea Org position. It goes on to say, in part, the Church will not discuss matters surrounding Mrs. Hill. She has used her name to make an otherwise ecclesiastical issue into a family matter and a personal attack on a family matter. The Church will not relinquish its dignity to engage in such a debate. The Church cannot respond directly to Mrs. Hill's allegations without impugning her character, something the Church will not do. Every religion has its detractors. There is no faith that can satisfy everyone Hill well in her search for spiritual fulfillment. For the full statement and for more on this story, go to the Nightline page at abcnews.com.